glad to be back with another session. Welcome to Recro Meets. This is Rashmi from uh, Recro, and I'm a community manager here, working towards building an exclusive community for developers to help you get connected with like-minded people and build your network and grow professionally. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and today we are going to talk about mental model for developers, how to develop problem solving mindset. Uh, just a quick introduction um, uh, to everyone who are new here and who are joining the webinars for the first time. Let me quickly introduce Recro to everyone uh, so that you know who is actually uh, you know hosting the webinar. So Recro is a developer focused platform helping developers uh, meet the right opportunity by connecting them with fast growing startups such as Kyofit, Udan, Swiggy. Denso, etc. So that's a bit about Recro. Uh, you can also, we would love to know you as well, uh, who you are and where you are joining us from. So feel free to let us know about you in the chat. Just give us your names and where are you joining us from and where do you work if you if you can inform that as well, that would be great. So really excited for this webinar, everyone. Uh, thank you once again for joining us. Uh, so uh, today we have our guest speaker, Prashant, who is a co-founder at Empty Cups. Thank you so much, Prashant, for taking out the time and joining us. Uh, I'm sure this session is going to be pretty insightful for all the developers coming from uh, different, different backgrounds. You can go ahead and say hi to the audience. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Would you like to share a quick about, uh, yeah, sure. like quick intro about Empty Cups and what we are going to discuss in the session? Yeah, um, sure. So um, uh, I am a co-founder at Empty Cup, and Empty Cup is a platform for interior design. And um, at Empty Cup, we believe that a well-designed house uh, slowly shapes the life of the family living in it in a hundred little ways over a decade. And uh, we're on a mission to make good interior design accessible. Um, if you, if if that sounds like you know a problem that you can relate to, uh, do reach out to us on LinkedIn uh, or our email. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Prashant. So everyone, we will be sharing Prashant's uh, LinkedIn and GitHub profile uh, at the end of the session so you can connect to him and reach out to him and also uh, you know we have a lot of lot to discuss today in terms of uh, you know how to uh, have like sort of prepare or have a good mental model as a developer so that is something that is coming up we are very much excited for the webinar and i hope you guys equally are so let's get started everyone uh, prashant over to you so um, i'm a problem solver and a front end developer and i've been doing web development for more than 12 years now um, since the days of Firefox 2. Uh, and as I said, I I'm already I'm also a co-founder at Empty Cup, a platform for interior design. And um, coming coming uh, back to this talk, uh, it's basically um, okay. So uh, over the next 40 minutes or so we'll be going over a few mental models, uh, understand why they are important, how they'll help us uh, write better code or uh, solve problems effectively. And um, I'm hoping this will be an interactive session. So uh, feel free to share your comments or your own experiences on some of the topics that we are going to discuss today. And if you have any questions, uh, you can put them in the chat as well and we'll be taking up at, uh, at the end of the session. So. Let's get started. All right, uh, so what's a mental model, right? Uh, to simply put it, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, an understanding of how things work. And um, there are a lot of mental models in uh, various domains of life. And right from our childhood, we learn many of these directly or indirectly uh, through our day-to-day -day experiences. And, um, they can be in various domains such as uh, finances, uh, cognition, self-help, and uh, decision-making, conflict resolution. Yes, um, so you can read uh, about them on the internet. And uh, this talk is specifically about mental models that help you with software development. Um, we'll quickly go over the models and um, and then discuss a few of these uh, 
in detail. And um, before that, uh, can you uh, can you share some of the models that you think are helpful for a developer? Um, what are what are some very helpful skills as, as a developer that you uh, find really helpful? Cool. Um, these are certainly, uh, you know, as I said, we do have a lot of mental models. And uh, even though I tried to put some of the models here uh, that I've gathered from my own learning, it's quite an exhaustive topic. And I do intend to uh, keep this uh, uh, keep this content collaborative. So I'm going to be publishing them on GitHub as well. So uh, it's it's just a, a perspective that I am bringing from my uh, learning over a decade of problem solving and building things. Uh, all these points that were shared in the chat are very valid and uh, we do use part of them in our day-to-day -day life. So um, these are some of the things that I think are very effective um, in terms of making you solve problems effectively. So um, communicating clearly, definitely, uh, and debugging effectively, managing complexity, being productive, and seeking feedback. So we'll go over all of these uh, uh, in, in detail uh, and discuss a couple of them in, uh, in a more detailed manner. And feel free to share your own um, thoughts on some of these points as we as we go along. Okay, so uh, I believe as developers we need to communicate a lot, and um, it be it be it with with the machine um, or with ourselves or with peers or stakeholders and the customers that use our uh, products. So when it comes to Programming, having a strong familiarity of the programming languages goes a long way in uh, making problem solving easy. And uh, especially having the ability to learn different languages quickly, if, if that's required, uh, is also quite helpful because uh, at times uh, you'll notice that you're in a situation where there is no other way but to write code in a certain language. Uh, it can be due to many reasons. Uh, one of them is environment you are in. Uh, if you're doing any embedded programming, you'll have to stick to uh, low level code. And uh, it can be many other reasons as well. Like if you have, if you're porting a library from uh, another language to your uh, primary language uh, or, um, or porting a function and uh, Personally, I believe that uh, jack of many and master of one is a great approach when it comes to programming languages. And um, also depending on situation, uh, you might be required to pick a different language and just having this ability to quickly switch languages and work independently, um, work as effectively in any other language is a great skill. As, as a JavaScript developer, um, when I was working in React Native, um, there was a situation where we had to work with the native um, native code, which would mean working with Swift and uh, Java code base. And that would not have been possible for me unless uh, I spent a lot of time previously fiddling with C Sharp and Java as well. So certainly uh, having, having multiple languages in your uh, skill, uh, skill set helps. So that's about, you know, how do you talk to the machine? Uh, when it comes to talking with ourselves, I believe self-talk is uh, definitely an important skill because uh, when you're able to articulate ideas effectively, um, it, it helps. Uh, a lot with improving our own clarity and clarity most of the times this determines how well ideas get implemented and um, when when it comes to talking to yourself uh, i know it sounds a little strange but i um, 
I find the concept called rubber duck debugging to be very helpful. Uh, you can look it up on the internet. It's basically the idea that um, you talk to an inanimate object like a duck when you don't have peers to talk to, and uh, that makes you express things out loud. And when you do that, uh, you kind of uh, find insights that you normally wouldn't when you have uh, no dialogue going. So um, that's something that's helpful. And when it when it comes to talking to your peers, uh, and especially, um, okay, so it's called uh, rubber duck debugging. I'll uh, I'll share links to that in the uh, material, so you can go through that. So um, yeah, when it comes to peers. Um, a friend actually shared with me once that, you know, your world is limited by your vocabulary. And whenever you're in a discussion with somebody and um, you're not able to understand what they are saying because you don't have a shared context, that doesn't make the, uh, you know, discussion flow smoothly. So learning different concepts and abstractions that, uh, you know, both, both the uh, that brings you on par with the conversation, so that you know um, the discussions can flow smoothly. Yeah, um, and that requires a lot of uh, gathering knowledge in the beginning because uh, when you are just starting to develop, you have a ton of. Uh, jargon that you don't understand. And I remember when I was starting, I used to have a long list of things to Google and uh, that would keep on increasing uh, as, as in when you Google a, a new word, it, it gives you a few more to Google. And slowly over time, you will uh, have, uh, you know, you will converge on the things you need to Google. But yes, um, that's, that's the way to build your vocabulary and uh, your own context so that you can communicate effectively with, with peers. And when it comes to talking to stakeholders in the project or even customers that may not have a technical background, it's, uh, it's not really you know, uh, a straightforward uh, communication that happens because normally engineers don't communicate much with um, people that don't have a technical background, and it's a it's a great exercise to connect with people outside of your circle, designers, product managers, customers, or you know people from all walks of life, so that you expand your circle and also your exposure to um, what what people's problems are and um, connect connect more deeply with them and debugging effectively. <laughs> so this is a favorite topic of mine. It's basically the, I, I, I believe the most important uh, aspect of debugging effectively is maintaining the context. Yeah, um, I, I believe that when you keep track of the problem and uh, define it clearly and, um, you know, log your own observation and your understanding of the problem, that becomes extremely important to solving the problem because um, there's literally no other way than writing all of the um, all of the context down, and especially it gets difficult to manage all the complexity in the mind uh, when when you're dealing with complex problems. Also, you're not only asserting that the problem exists most of the times just by defining the problem clearly. Um, it helps you find the solution or understanding the direction you want to pursue. Uh, once again, um, rubber duck debugging is uh, another great tool to uh, help you navigate, you know, maintain the context of a problem, um, how, how you can log your entire understanding of the problem. And when it comes to, you know, different approaches for problem solving. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, 
uh, actually not first principles reasoning it is trial and error like you try a bunch of things and see if the problem goes away and this is like most natural when you start to uh, develop and it is actually still helpful when you're dealing with like poorly documented or complex systems where you don't really understand the behavior uh, of the system so trial and error definitely helps but um it it doesn't really help you when when it comes to uh, understanding or following a methodic approach to problem solving so uh, that's where first principles reasoning comes and uh, it's basically what it starts with like what do we know about the system and um just describing what is what is the system and uh what is the expected behavior what is the actual behavior and coming up with different hypotheses and validating them making observations while you're doing that and reasoning on top of that this is a very um rigorous approach uh, it is something that you can evolve over time it's it's not an intuitive approach uh, because we are very much used to relating and you know finding pat patterns uh, doing pattern matching like when you when you have solved five problems of similar kind and you see a sixth problem you kind of think okay what um what problem is this more similar to but that doesn't help you uh objectively see the problem so it's always helpful to uh put put all the preconceptions aside and uh look at look at the object uh, look at the problem objectively and uh start with like fundamentals of uh reasoning and then go go from there uh where the uh reasoning takes you and often you'll find elimination to be very helpful here as well like trying to eliminate parts of the system that are not likely a cause for the problem and uh there's a, there's a famous uh saying here you know once you eliminate the improbable whatever remains no matter how impossible must be the truth um that's from sherlock holmes so it's um there are various approaches to uh problem solving how you approach different kinds of problems um it could be different for algorithmic problems it could be different from for systems where you have no documentation uh but certainly first principles reasoning will um help you navigate you know uh the problem space or uh, your your journey to the solution better and most of the times um you know you you work with hard problems when when you work with hard problems you uh spend days or weeks uh i personally i've had like a problem that pestered me for almost two and a half years uh and what happens is um uh, you need to take a break and then uh g- give it another shot and as you do that every time you see the problem you see it in a new perspective and uh you don't really have all the uh old perspectives and um that that gives uh that gives a lot of entropy to your solution um you know solution discovery um and it's it's helpful to take a break and then uh you know give it a shot again uh most most of the times it's um quite effective and when that doesn't help uh you know uh you can seek help and it's it's um, it's a good idea to get help from a colleague or uh posting it online on stack overflow and uh the most important bit is uh when you are trying to get help from from somebody uh if you are able to communicate the most information in least amount of words if you are able to communicate most information in least amount of words 
that makes it very precise for them to uh, understand and process it. it. It does require a lot of mental energy, but it will increase the likelihood of getting help back because uh, not many people would appreciate reading essays of text uh, to be able to uh, you know, understand what your problem is all about and then help you. So also um, being able to Google well is a superpower. And uh, almost always, if you have a problem, somebody somewhere would have solved it before. And if you're able to find that, then um, that's, that's almost as, uh, as good as solving it yourself. And uh, when it comes to um, problem solving, debugging yourself, I think certainly tools help you a lot, like being familiar with your tools. Um, especially uh, debugger, uh, if, you, if you're working in the JavaScript world, the debugger that's there in the browsers is quite powerful. It has a ton of features. It lets you understand, uh, step through the code and uh, do performance tuning or understanding where the application performance has, um, has bottlenecks and you can also identify and fix memory leaks and improve load times. So uh, basically a lot of work went into debugging and instrumentation tools uh, and they are kind of like, you know, they help you see the world better. Like if you, if you are uh, a person with spectacles, you know how that lets you see the world better, right? And debugging is kind of, debugger, uh, debuggers are kind of like that in the sense that they let you see uh, what, what variables are in the current scope, current context, and um, what whether certain conditions that you think should be hitting are whether they are hitting or not. So um, yeah, um, with, with all the, work that has gone into these tools and being able to use them is it, it's very helpful because um it's like you you have a very powerful engine and you're not able to utilize that so just understanding your tools and learning how to log at different places in the system and uh isolating different Parts, eliminating different parts of the system that are not a problem and then figuring out how you um, flow through the debugging process. That, that's something you learn over time, but uh, yes, a to familiarity with your tools is uh, quite helpful. When it comes to managing complexity, so most of the times I believe uh, when you are solving problems and if, if you have like good test suit or uh, you know, documentation, you don't encounter problems where you have to like do uh, debugging. And that, that is possible when you have like systems that are, uh, you know, systems that are having clean design patterns and definitely, yeah, uh, they have like good, um, principles of design. So, uh, and that happens basically when you um, manage complexity, right? Like sys the complexity in a system is distributed across it. And as a, as a good developer, um, it's, it's your job to manage it well. And a, a majority of complexity is in the developer space, basically where somebody that has to write this code, uh, you know, work with a code base, they need to understand how, you know, how, how to work with it. Like, so when, when it comes to making a project or a library easy to work with, there is nothing better than a great documentation and writing clear documentation basically means that, you know, you can simplify concepts and communicate them clearly. Although that takes a lot of effort, it's it's uh, one of the most helpful tools uh, for 
helping helping your peers uh, contribute or uh, anybody in the open source contribute to your code repository another thing um, that's almost like the holy grail of a developer is writing clean code and it's it's almost um, it's it's mostly about showing empathy to the maintainer and others working on the code base like um, I'm sure most of you would have felt the pain in uh, understanding bad code written by others, or you know, you'd have seen some ugly code, and uh, only to find out that it was uh, you that wrote that, and that that certainly happened with me. And I've learned the hard way that you know, in most of the cases, um, readability of code translates to the clarity of the mind of the person writing it and clarity in turn translates to the stability of the system. So with, with all the code formatters, linters and code quality evaluation tools available, it's basically not, not at all acceptable excuse to write poorly formatted or, you know, logically unsound code. One of the things that um, FX the complexity is uh, tech debt, right? Like uh, tech debt is basically, you know, uh, whenever you are working on a on adding a feature to an existing product, you find yourself in a dilemma. Uh, do you do a quick hack or take time to refactor the system? And when you do a hack. Uh, when when you do a hack, it creates a small mess in the code. Uh, you feel you feel that you can see the change very clearly, uh, and it's easy to do. But what happens is um, over time, these small hacks accumulate, and the code becomes ugly to read, and refactors, especially, will become harder to do over the period, and the code base becomes unmaintainable. So actively allocating time to you know, clear the tech debt and working on refactoring the code base that helps, helps maintain you, uh, helps maintain a clean code base. And um, when it comes to performance, I think um, over the years I realized that writing efficient code is uh, equally important. Like, Normally, it's a tendency, especially in the front end space, that you know people say that okay, I don't have to care about time complexity of uh, how how you um, write code, and it's it's hard to choose the you know uh, choose not doing the easiest thing to do. But basically, it lacks uh, an empathy to the users and the environment. And I, and I say environment because uh, by writing slightly efficient, resource efficient code, uh, you have a direct impact on the environment. So um, you can always uh, choose the right solution and not the easy, easy one. That's um, okay. So uh, another thing I wanted to discuss was being productive. Like how do you find how do you find motivation when you're working on things? And um, how, do you, how do you set expectations? How do you like make consistent progress and maintain focus? And um, yeah, I, I feel that you know, motiv motivation can be many things and uh, it can be creating something new, uh, you know, solving hard problems, Getting getting things done, <laughs> definitely Jira issues as app uh, and um, but I, I feel that you know understanding um, what motivates you helps you stay connected with the problem. Like um, everybody has their own uh, thing, and personally for me, it's it's understanding that um, the impact of what my work is. It helps me do it that much better. And definitely um, looking at the bigger picture helps and where, where you are making an impact.
So um, when uh, one of the things that's been a belief for me is that you know uh, opportunity to do great work is its own reward, and uh, sometimes we have to do grunt work as well, uh, where the work isn't exciting. And that's when we need to kind of find motivation. Uh, most of the times, if you're doing anything, you know, um, new or innovative, you, you don't get to do exciting stuff all the time. You do have uh, a lot of grant work that you do, a, a lot of boilerplate code you write, and um, only then you'll be able to, you know, work on the juicy parts. So rewarding yourself, um, how do, how do you reward yourself, right? Uh, for me, it's mostly about allocating time for exploring new things. That's a, that's a great motivator. So whenever, um, whenever I'm solving a problem and I encounter, um, I encounter uh, you know a new technology or a library, um, I would just make a list of it and then. Uh, you know, keep it in the list of things to explore. That that becomes uh, a task for me to uh, a fun task for me to work on, and um, also a lot of the times um, you don't find yourself motivated enough because um, you know you're dealing with a lot of drudgery in your work. Like there is, um, um, so. When, when, you, when you find yourself in that situation, I feel that you can try to automate some of the things. So uh, automating is definitely a, a lot of fun. And one of the uh, cases we've had was uh, when we were figuring out how we could automate our mobile app builds, uh, which was using React Native. And uh, we spent almost a week trying to automate all of the build process and um, ensure that whenever you push the code, the, um, you know, the builds get generated automatically and pushed to the Play Store and App Store. That, that used to save us a lot of time because whenever you try to build it, it, it used to take like 40 minutes or so and automating that was a great joy. So keep, keep rewarding yourself and um, identifying the drudgery that you are dealing with, mark it as you know uh, things to do, and have have uh, have them resolved like actively. That helps with uh, staying motivated. And so, um, when when it comes to you know uh, working in a team, setting expectations becomes another important aspect because. Um, when when you keep uh, you know when you plan and uh, keep all the stakeholders on the same page with what's happening, uh, there is there is some sort of uh, um, liberation, uh, as in freedom to execute, so that you can maintain some sort of a healthy work life balance and avoid burnout. Uh, estimating things is still elusive to me after all these years, but I I do believe it is uh, of much value. Yeah. Uh, Making progress, this definitely, uh, you know, another thing that uh, that helps with staying motivated is seeing progress happen. Like progressive enhancement is uh, something that's been there in the web since uh, very early days. Like a lot of features would get implemented in uh, in parts. Like first you'd see a basic version of the feature and then you'd see a uh, more refined version of it. So, um, if you if you try to start with like the uh, perfect version, it would be very hard. So try to uh, op, trying to prioritize um, what pr trying to prioritize what you're going to work on, and um, uh, basically finding the twenty percent of effort that will give you the eighty percent of value, and working on that uh, it helps a lot with you know making a lot of progress. And also, it takes a lot of discipline to stay focused whenever you are solving. Um, as I as I said earlier, you encounter a lot of 
uh, exploring shiny things that come in your way. Uh, it could be a new library or a framework. And just noting these things down and exploring them later helps you uh, both to stay focused and also to broaden your knowledge. And when, when it comes to, you know, uh, maintaining focus, it's, it's basically about doing deep work and uh, everybody has their own way to, uh, you know, everybody has their own group where they are very productive. And personally for me, I found time tracking tools like CubeServe to be very helpful. It helped me build a habit of doing undistracted work, sometimes even working for more than 12 hours. And uh, it's basically about investing in, you know, creating a peaceful and conducive environment for, um, for like doing, doing your best work. And it's, it's a lot of, bo- it's a lot of uh, um, removing attention things, uh, you know, rescheduling your meetings so that you have a lot of free time, um, not, you know, not taking any support calls in, uh, in your debugging sessions or, you know, problem solving sessions. So uh, it's, it's something that, that you need to work on and, you know, put effort into to get that kind of uh, focus and, and to be able to sustain it. And this is, uh, this is one of the mm, most important factors, I believe, uh, you know, feedback. Um, normally, what, what kind of feedback do you uh, get from your peers or from, uh, you know, um, from your manager or the team members? It's, it's mostly about what, what's your priority uh, for what, what are you working on? Or um, sometimes when you get feedback from the customers, uh, you understand how they are seeing your product. Um, is, is what you're building easy to use? Or you know, does it solve all the problems? Um, and that, that basically helps you um, Develop empathy for the users, and you know, uh, write write efficient code. And um, most of the times, when it comes to design, um, you have to kind of be be the user yourself and try to understand does what you're working on make sense or not. And um, and also, um, when it comes to code code reviews are very helpful in, in the sense that, you know, uh, a fresh perspective on, on what you've worked on gives you uh, an insight into anything that you've missed or uh, it also helps you, you know, stay up to date with how the system is changing as a whole and keep that context of the system intact. Um, and, and another uh, benefit I find from uh, reading old PRs is, uh, getting familiar with the code base and understanding why and how the changes are being made. So uh, code reviews are definitely uh, helpful and it'll also force you to allocate time for uh, you know refactoring and do- doing things in a more clean fashion. And uh, when it comes to mentoring, this is uh, this is something I can connect to a lot because um, normally um, feedback is something that is very uh, helpful if you if you know how you uh, how you process it. So being able to not take it personally and see it objectively um, that's that's something uh, you learn over time. For me personally, it was uh, just the understanding that okay, the uh, person that's giving me the feedback has has a good intention at their heart, uh, regardless of how they express it. Uh, what what's being said is uh, more important than who's saying it. So uh, definitely seek advice uh, from people and get feedback and uh, act on it. And 
it it also becomes important to give feedback as well uh especially you know uh you've kind of uh, gotten support from a lot of people and the only way to re- repay them is to provide support yourself this is kind of like you know meta um topics uh it's it's something that um you can i mean you can understand just by reading them that okay so the world is full of fascinating problems waiting to be solved and uh you don't really have to solve problems yourself uh if they are already solved and you should always kind of uh, aim for perfect uh, progress over perfection and push yourself um uh, push yourself to you know get out of your comfort zone and uh, find inspirations at goals and that's how you grow as a person and yes uh the last point is about you know being being stuck with problem solving when you face hard problems uh you shouldn't shun away from them and just being in that situation teaches you a lot more about problem solving than any talk or a book can so uh never avoid <laughs> problems or underestimate your ability to deal with them yeah um these these are i i do understand these uh, are you know very abstract topics and uh most of them you already know or relate to them in some some way uh but yes uh uh this these were some of the ideas that i've gathered over the time and i do believe this uh, notion of a mental models for developers is a, a more of a collaborative effort so uh, feel free to add your own understanding to this uh, when we publish this on the uh, github and hopefully it will be helpful to uh, at least a few people all right uh, thank you so much prashant for sharing such insightful points that you have shared so we have uh, we have some questions in the qna section uh, if you can check them out and answer those questions as well that would be great okay so akshit is asking what is the best way to manage distributed documentation how can uh, this be achieved also how can terms of documentation be made easily understandable or describable any tips for these okay okay this is something that uh, we've been trying to do ourselves as well uh, so definitely organizing complexity would would happen through um, multiple repositories and also having some sort of a overview overview diagrams or um, so it doesn't make really um, any sense to put all of the documentation at one place so you would ideally have some sort of a map of how the documentation can be and um map of different systems in the um different systems you have and then have the documentation for each of the systems within uh within the different repositories so um one of the most complex documentations i have seen is uh boto3 definitely it has a ton of documentation uh specifically uh there is a lot of detail about what classes are there what methods are there what attributes are there and um usage examples so uh you can you can probably look into that then there are there is next question by vishal uh the question is due to tight deadlines tech debts becomes inevitable getting the tech that later on becomes problem as a developer we are worried what if code breaks okay yes uh, so tech debt definitely it's always a dilemma like do you do things quickly or do you do them right and uh, what helps is uh scheduling time for tech debt as well like whenever you are probably sprint uh, planning a sprint or uh, you have time between sprints you uh, account for that and um, you know that's that's how you work on tech debt and ideally you shouldn't have uh, too much of debt like that indicates a problem that's more serious 
probably you're missing some design uh, abstractions or you know um, things things in the higher higher level design that are broken okay again this is by vishal and the question is while seeking help or describing the problem it's hard to keep information precise and crisp can you help on that by sharing some examples keeping the information precise and crisp is definitely an art how do you um, how do you clearly but concisely do uh, documentation is very hard thing in fact uh, my favorite topic uh, in in english language was prezi writing which basically is uh, converting a long paragraph into a into a short summary without leaving any detail out and you can practice that and the the fundamentals of that will help you with uh, doing this but in in a, in an essence it would be um basically defining entities and uh, not repeating entities uh, excessively and not leaving it not leaving any scope for ambiguity or you know uh, assumptions so yeah that that could be how uh, this can be solved okay uh the next question is by mohit kumar and the question is can you please suggest some resources to learn js in catalytic manner okay catalytic manner i am not sure what that is uh, maybe it's uh, it's meant to say you know learn effectively uh one thing for sure is uh learning the fundamentals and building trying to build something yourself when when you put yourself in uh, in a place where uh you have to build something then that's when you learn the most and um most often the things that you build when you don't have to right they help you uh when you are building something that you need to so uh definitely fun learning fundamentals of javascript that's uh that's handled by so many people before uh you have a ton of resources uh and you can check out uh there there is a course by um one of the creators of redux i believe uh it's it's about mental models of javascript so you can uh, I'll, i'll share a link in the chat for that as well you can check that out okay so we are short on time let's take one last question uh the question is anonymous and the question is how to approach novel problems like when the problem is completely new no one has solved it and there is no reference related to it how to solve such problems okay this uh this sounds exactly like you know many problems that we solve uh and what helps there is a lot of uh understanding like understanding the problem and that these these are situations where you get to express your creativity as well uh, and uh it it helps a lot to have exposure so um definitely first principles will get you to understand okay um how do you decompose uh, this problem into sub problems and um how do how do you tackle them so it it would certainly be uh the case that you know you can pull together a lot of resources and uh, be able to find a solution and uh, yes uh, and if all doesn't work getting help that is the most Im- impactful thing all right everyone that was the last uh, question of the session and uh, we are very much close to the time now um and that brings us to the end of this wonderful session but before we wrap, wrap up there is something interesting that i would like to share with everyone um we have created a exclusively slack community for developers to connect with like minded people and build your network if you have any questions with respect to today's topic or if you have any questions in general in uh, with respect to development or job opportunity 
activities or anything of that sort you can sort of be a part of the community connect with like minded people there i am sharing the link in the chat so you can be you can join this um, you can join this slack community where we uh, post new stuff every single day new topics new events uh, also um, apart from that we have also uh, we are also coming up with more events like these i'm sure uh, 80% of i i launched one poll uh, in in between the session and 85% people said that they found this session useful so we are doing more such session for you guys so make sure you uh, you know join us for uh, future sessions as well apart from that recro is also hiring talented uh, developers you can check out the job openings and get a chance to work with amazing amazing startups like tanzo swiggy and work on latest technologies again the career page is in the chat section um you can follow us on our social media i have shared the links uh, in the chat again uh, and i hope to see you guys in the next event till then take care and stay safe thank you so much prashant once again for joining us take care bye bye